is the Honeydew Live list. Live. I uh, had to change my uh, location today. I was going to go back in the backyard. Uh, decided I wanted to come out front. Once again, little kids are out playing and doing things out in the uh, out in the cul-de-sac. So I have been banished to the side of my house and uh, going to enjoy this a little bit over here. Uh, talk with you guys, see what you guys got going on. Once again, this is those things that you guys have that you are doing in your areas, what you guys are facing, what you guys are seeing, um, what's going on around you know your area. I like to know where you guys are located, what you guys are uh, you know facing and seeing at this point in time. Um, as you guys start to filter in here, go ahead and uh, start to uh, let me know down in the chat section down below um, what you guys have. And I think that it's the wrong way. It is. Well, I'm going to restart this live. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Love you guys, but I'm going to, because it's uh, the wrong way. This is a bad, uh, whatever. I'm not going to restart this live. We're going to go this way. We're going to do it the ugly way. Yep. Go ahead and make fun of me. I didn't realize that this. So I guess we're going to go the wrong way with this. All works for me. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. Um, I don't know how the chat will come in because I have a, uh, I have a dead cat on here. Am I green yet? No, no, not green yet. I'm going to be honest. Um, Dealing with a few issues, have some seed stock that's still down and in the lawn. Um, so the green isn't quite there. I uh, am going to be putting out a regimen that I'm going to be following this year in the either uh, my tomorrow video or my Sunday video. I haven't made up my mind which one I want to drop yet. Um, so just uh, trying to uh, figure out like where to drop that video and then just get this thing um, going green and uh, working through things there, Jason. Um, Papa Shafe, what's going on? Uh, what's going on, Kyle B? Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. Uh, heat stress has been huge and you can't really push water into them too hard because you have to be paying attention to all the water and everything that's going on. I was making some adjustments. That's why I have my nice little tool in my hand just so that I was dialed in a lot better so that I could run my uh, sprinklers very efficiently so it's always a smart thing to uh, use your uh, sprinklers the right way and to not waste water when not absolutely necessary uh, still looks good but needs water I understand that be right back okay sounds good lawn journey what's going on uh, Marshall how are you Oh, well, how's it going, Drone Madness? How are you? I appreciate that, uh, that uh, hello, beautiful. It has been a while. I was wondering if you'd given up and uh, started doing something a little bit different. People think I'm hilarious out here uh, talking to my phone as I'm, like I said, on the side of my house. There was little kidlins out front, so I am avoiding them. What do you guys got going on it around your area? I know here in the West we are dealing with like some severe drought and uh, watering issues. Um, it is starting to take hold and you can definitely see it taking hold pretty well across a lot of lawns. I even have hydrotain in my lawn, but I'm trying not to run too much water um, so that you know we can conserve and have uh, a better effort altogether. All right, so hey, what's going on, Jay? Greetings from Tampa, love that. I'm about to go mow out in this obnoxious wind here a bit. Yeah, yeah, like I agree. The wind just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> and hopefully my dead cat is blocking out a lot of the wind. If it is, then I apologize. It's, uh, it's a little bit obnoxious, that is for sure. Um, this little tool. <laughs> uh, looky lose yeah yeah they like to uh, come driving by and checking out what you got going on in the lawn um, always a good thing though um, still whacking at it I think I got hit with the major grub worms really bad and uh, need some serious help yeah grubs here in Utah so any kind of pest has been super early this year I have been diagnosing lawns with uh, sod webworm 
and sod webworm damage here in Utah it's for about a month now and that's super early. We just didn't get a very good winter without any moisture and stuff. It really allowed other pests, allowed other, um, other damage, um, heat stress. Everything in the lawn has been like super bad this year here in Utah because of how bad our winter was. We hardly got any rain, any water. So our dormancy plus cold and our grasses are really struggling this year. Things that normally are bulletproof, like people aren't getting grubs normally or getting grubs. People who didn't have any problems with any kind of pests in their lawn have had pest issues. People who didn't have any problems with water coverage, the water coverage is showing. So yeah, it is coming out and it is very, very um, apparent at this point. Uh, here in Utah, I've been using a loft, by the way, drone. I know you asked me that on, uh, on Instagram. A loft is what I have been using. Um, and those grubs were not in my lawn. That was another person that I helped. They had grubs and we spotted it super early. As you saw, they were super babies. Dry for a while now, getting tons of rain, heat, and humidity. I do everything but the humidity part. <laughs> I, I can't do humidity. I am a chicken when it comes to the, the humidity part. Starting to see some fungus pressure, oof. Yeah, that's always hard, that humidity, when that starts to creep up, if you don't have a good, like airflow and everything down in that soil, funguses are definitely gonna be something that you're gonna be battling. Uh, try to get some airflow down there. If you have to, use something as a preventative not, or as a curative at this point, if you're getting it already, um, so that you can you know, keep your lawn going in the correct uh, direction. So, oh, where are we at? Starting to see some fungus. What's going on, Ron? How are you? Andy, how have you been? How's it going? Um, good evening, Dwayne. Uh, your yard looks amazing, or are you saying mine? Mine's just at a, at a very flattering angle right this second. Uh, it's, uh, and it's dark. I don't like shade pitchers. I throw shade at shade pitchers all the time. It's a very deceiving pitcher. I love a good sun pitcher versus a shade pitcher. Um, what do you recommend for the grubs and sod webworm? Like I said, a loft. So what a loft has is it has, um, has the double kill in it so that it will kill your, um, your soddies. It will kill any of the regular lawn pests and it'll kill the grubs. So it does give you a double kill in that. Um, definitely works out really well. That's the one that I like here in Utah. It's worked extremely well. Um, what's going on SoCal? My yard was destroyed by bugs and I never had any before had to do a major repairs Yeah, like I said here in Utah this year has been a very Horrible like year for a lot of lawns a lot of lawns came out super bad super pressures that we've never had to deal with um, Different issues like my lawns never had as many dry issues as it has this year and I I have seen like my water coverage is really exposed right now and so like I said that's the reason why I'm out here like making these adjustments because my water coverage isn't the greatest in the world and so out here making those adjustments. <laughs> Any temperatures above 85 is unbearable for you. Well, for the past, what has it been, like three weeks now, we've been above 85. It's been pretty miserable here in Utah as far as heat is concerned. We've had a lot of pressure with no moisture in sight. We really need it. Where are you at, Jim, to uh, have anything over 85? Been receiving tons of rain and lots of humidity. Fescue is definitely feeling it. Yeah, but fescue um, usually has the best um, disease tolerance out of the cool seasons. Um, so you should do pretty well, you know, keep an eye on it, see what uh, you can do to assist it, keeping the air moving and stuff. Um, what part of the state? Northern Idaho, yep. Just did a sizable mulch job for a fam member along with some, oops, uh, hedge trimming, pulling weeds, and then got home and um, put down some stress blend. Nice, nice, I like that. What's going on, Lazy Lawns? 
Uh, thank you so much. I will try to tune in more often. Sounds good. Yeah, I was wondering what had been up with you. You hadn't been around since uh, Brett left, so I was wondering if he had put you in his back pocket and you guys went down to uh, um, Florida together. Uh, obviously not if you're uh, able to talk now. <laughs> um, always good to have you around. So what else are you guys seeing out in your guys' lawns? What pressures are you guys seeing? Um, like I said, I am seeing super early grub damage um, here, and it is something that has been um, a, a super bad pressure with our pests in the lawn. And uh, with uh, the pests that we are seeing, they are a lot earlier. These time frames are moved way up. Uh, normally, I'm not seeing this kind of damage from um, grubs until like the end of June, uh, middle of July for sure. Uh, middle of July is usually Utah's hot time for you being able to diagnose it and see those issues that uh, that are present from all the grubs. Um, and so I was super shocked like when this individual told me that they had grubs but they know their stuff because they've had grubs for the past like four years and I've just started helping them this year and they said they had grubs. I went and did the check and lo and behold, yep, it was grubs. So definitely seeing the, the issues here early. Another issue that's been really bad that it's kind of overlooked and people don't understand how badly it affects things is that um, our lawns went to seed pretty hard this year. Mine definitely went to seed pretty hard. It went really hard back in 2018. Um, 2019 it was soft, 2020 was soft. This year, once again, because of how bad our winter was, it just has gone to seed. And so I have a lot of hard stock down in my lawn and it has given me a bad cut. Um, I had a thing on Instagram a little while ago and people were telling me my mower blades were uh, dull to get these um, poor cuts. There we are. To get these, let's see. I'm not used to this vertical. I know it's, I'm not supposed to be recording like this, but it started like this, so we stayed with it. But you see that bad cut? Come on, come on, focus, focus. How do I focus it in? I don't know how to focus it in this. Right there, right there, right there. Right. Anyways, see the bad cut? So it isn't that the mower blades are not sharp. They're definitely sharp. They're definitely like still doing their thing, but all those hard seed stock that are down and in there are just hard. And when that mower blade hits it and it hits so many of them like we've had this year, it really has like affected the lawn and the quality of the cut. And it doesn't look as pristine as it can. Um, and it, like I said, I haven't had this much seed stock in my lawn since 2018 when I went on a rant about it and didn't know a whole lot about what I was even talking about or ranting about. So it's uh, one of those things that, uh, um, that you just kind of live and learn with. If you have seed stock and you're seeing this type of bad cut and stuff, pay attention to it. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do other than chop it down, let the grass, the good grass grow above it. That really helps. Um, but overall, that's definitely another thing, like I said, that has been a lot worse this year because of what we're facing here in Utah as far as the drought and in the West altogether. Where are we at? Speaking of Brett, what's he been up to? I don't know. I, I haven't talked to him in a little while. He's over there skipping around with people hand in hand and wearing costumes and dressing up for the 4th of July before the 4th of July. <laughs> He's doing Brett things, let's just say it that way. Um, rabbit pressure here is killing you. No doubt, like, I know that uh, I don't, we don't have it here because we're down in the valley, so we don't get any kind of like bad types of weird pests like that. Um, but I know that John has had rabbit issues up in uh, Park City before, and uh, it's definitely been one of those things that uh, that neighbor was laughing at me. He likes to tease me. Um, it's one of those things that it's an odd pest, but they do cause grass damage. Another one that causes grass damage that I came across is skunks. Skunks and voles and, uh, and moles, those types of things. Like I was up helping somebody up in the mountains and they had skunks and they had voles and moles. And that was another place where I saw um, some grubs at was uh, up there and they were after the grubs to eat them. So that was one of the things that um, have been paying attention to. Uh, severe drought. 
I always press the wrong button. And heat stress, Northern Illinois is our big problem. Yeah, that this drought, like it's crazy. We really just need it to be like a good medium, like in the middle, because too much rain is floods, not good, obviously. And no rain is drought. And we just, it just needs to figure itself out. Really does. Um, accidentally took out two of their relatives last week. How do you accidentally do that? Um, they don't even run from me anymore. <laughs> They're Cali gangster rabbits now. <laughs> oh, what up, Bessie? All right. Um, in northern Idaho, it's been a roller coaster of temperatures, 90s to the 50s with high winds. Yeah, so uh, today we were 90. Tomorrow we're going to be 67 here in Utah. And, of course, we've had winds for the past three days. And so it's, it's all types of fun in the long. Uh, let's see. Many of the lawns in our area have been dealing with a lot of dollar spot and brown patch due to heavy rain and um, not enough time to thoroughly dry up. Yeah, no, that that is like, that's the hard part is that, you know, if you have the moisture and the humidity and stuff, you've really got to pay attention to how well the grass breathes and get air, as much airflow as you possibly can down in there. Um, trying to keep it trimmed up, you know, keep the dethatch on hand, like whether you're going to dethatch it early in the spring or if you intermittently use dethatch the product throughout the season, anything that's going to allow it to breathe and to uh, um, keep that moisture flowing down and through. I've used, and I know it sounds super weird, but I've been using baby shampoo in a few different types of fungal issues that people have been having, and it's helped it like drain a lot better, and it's helped quite a bit, crazy enough. like as kind of an assistance is if you can get it to drain and for that water to get down and out of the soil a little bit quicker because you're getting it really quickly with baby shampoo it really has made a huge difference i know it's a, a crazy thought process to add something with water to get rid of water but it definitely helps out Let's see. Back to work. Be safe. Have a good one, SoCal. You be safe as well. Oh, let's see. Brett dumped me. I'm uh, too clutch nasty for him. I don't know what you mean. I have no clue what you mean. So, what else have you guys been having going on? We have 20 people in here, and uh, I'm only having a few of you guys comment and uh, talk. The kids went in. So I was like, ooh, free at last, free at last. I'm going to run this phone over here, and we're going to go play them along. Um, what would you guys like uh, like to see me do? Like, I used to mow when I was over at Brett's, but I had two people. So, like, one person could entertain, and the other person could uh, play with the mower. I, uh, I do need to mow. It is getting shaggy. It hasn't been mowed for a day. Um, so... Yeah, it's, it's definitely doing some things. It's looking really good. Like I said, I don't like the shadow. Like, so clouds don't come, don't cover the sun yet. Um, so I like it when you can actually see that, the true sun color. What everybody's going to see when they look at it, you know, in the sun. Because you can't, you can't trick people that are like driving by in the sun. You, you can take a shade photo and give shade to the shade. Um, but anyways, it's not doing bad. It's definitely doing well. The applications, um, this little application process, it's funny because I have to have this up here. So I have this like shadow that just hits me because my thing is turned sideways. But uh, this next video that I'm going to be putting out is going to be talking about what my application process for this front patch, the side patch, and then my front um, lawn strip up there is going to be. Those are... Uh, those that uh, video is going to be coming out here soon and i believe that this is going to be my favorite lawn plan that i have ever done this year um it's going to be one of those things that's definitely going to take my lawn to a different level with not a whole lot of other maintenance like it's going to slow down my mow it's going to slow down the growth it's going to slow things down but we're going to go super green and it's going to be something that will make a huge difference in my lawn so i'm excited about this 
being dropped here soon. I've got to I've got to get it detailed a little bit better. I'm I'm kind of trying to get the thought process right on it because I know what I'm doing, but to explain it has been a little bit more difficult in a video sense. Um, so hopefully I can get this out tomorrow. If not, I'll have a different video out and it'll be out on Sunday. So just kind of keep that in mind. What do you guys got going on? Ha <laughs> ha. Rasta is looking like carpet. Or Raza. Uh, what up everyone? Uh, severe drought in uh, Illinois. Haven't mowed in two weeks. Just letting it go. Yeah, if you can't give it water, just let it go. Just uh, don't mess with it. Don't stress it out. Don't mow it. Don't like give it any kind of issues that it needs. Just let it go uh, into dormancy. And once you can pull it out of dormancy because you're going to have the, the water and stuff, then um, continue the rest of your routine. You could give it something that would help with the drought stress. Um, like you could give it something with a little bit of potassium that will definitely help it. But yeah back away from it if it's going into dormancy and you're not able to water it just back away don't mess with it don't walk on it don't you know do anything extra that you don't have to if you have to use it as a yard it is a yard it will come back but overall if you can kind of stay off of it you can kind of just let it be it'll definitely be fine when you do so smart move there frankie um grass is looking like carpet oh gotcha i was like i don't know what rasa is i have no idea um, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, it's at two inches, so it's not super short, but the nice thing about it is, like I said, every other day I've been mowing it. So I've been mowing it for, th um, three times a week is basically what that boils out to. And, uh, with mowing it three times a week, it really has done extremely well. It hasn't really had a lot of like issues or anything. Other than I, as I explained earlier, I'm really starting to see where my um, sprinklers haven't been doing extremely well for me. They've had poor coverage, super poor coverage. Um, my grass is just not growing very well. And I think a lot of it because of my neglect, I'm just not giving the attention and the love that it needs. Need to get back on the saddle. Yeah, and the nice thing about it is, is that if it has water, so water is key, like, there's no other thing that you can do for a lawn that is any better than water, obvious, to grass nuts, but some people just aren't grass nuts here. Um, the second thing you can do is mow it, but there are things that you can definitely give it that will help it out. You don't have to give it a whole lot. I've only put a third of nitrogen in this, this, uh, this whole season. We're June, and I've only put a third of nitrogen in it. The crazy thing is, is that this plan that I'm putting together, I'm having a hard time getting it above a pound of nitrogen for the whole season, but I honestly, I'm so stoked for how like well it's gonna work. So it doesn't take a whole lot of things to be able to make it nice. The biggest thing that you can do is if you have water and it waters well, like you have good coverage and you're not having any issues there, is just mow it. Like mowing it and just keeping your uh, clippings uh, mulch, as long as it's mulch, as long as you guys understand what mulch is, um, as long as it's mulch and keeping those clippings there, you really don't have to add a whole lot. Like you're taking away nutrients if you bag, not a big deal, just add another fertilizer in there. But if you keep it in there, you really don't have to add too much more to it. Just, you know, keep soil amendments going to it. And it really makes a huge difference. Um, just for people, yeah. Just like I was talking about earlier, all this seed stock. Where uh, my Kentucky Blue just kind of gave up on the seed, uh, like the seeding. This is uh, rye. <laughs> you can't really see it a lot because it's been cut down. But that's rye. And it took off now that uh, Kentucky Blue has uh, been gone. So just so that you know, this right here, it's a, like an inch worth of grass. This isn't a, this isn't mulch, okay? A quarter of an inch this little guy that's mulch okay quarter of an inch or less that's mulch so if you're if you're not bagging and you're getting clippings this big it is not mulching properly either you need to get a better blade you need to get a mower that actually mulches you need to put your mulch plug in you need to uh, figure out why it isn't mulching correctly or you need to cut more often like if you're cutting like where it only cuts off a fourth of a blade when you cut then you're totally fine so um, just keep that in mind um, 
So where this whole long story of this is going is that it's easy to rebound a lawn as long as you have water is what I, that whole thing was about. Just give yourself the nutrients that you absolutely need, um, especially if you're tapped for time. If there's a lot going on in your life, don't stress it, just mow it. Like just um, give it more mowings and make sure it's watering well and it will do a lot better. And when I say when you're giving it more mowings, two's plenty. Two is more than plenty. If you can't do two, kick it up above three and a half inches and just mow it once a week. Like you just have to be honest with your with what you're gonna do and make it work for what you're gonna make it work for. Ooh, see? Ooh, 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 ooh. Come back out, son. No, come back out. We don't like this. This is ooh. 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 Um so let's see if you guys have said anything, what we got going on. Fairly new to lawn care, um, new homeowner last August. It was neglected probably for years before I moved in. Just got major Kalinga issues, Bermuda grass battling St. Augustine. Love a part of the YouTube community and learning a lot. Yeah, like you're gonna learn that it doesn't take a whole lot. When you first move into a place, you kind of have to learn the, the problems and the issues that it's facing. But once you start addressing and tackling those issues and going down that rabbit hole, it really makes a huge difference super quickly. And it will change those things relatively quickly as well. Um, the thing that you got to always be understanding in the lawn is that you've got to be patient. Like nothing happens quick in a lawn except for disaster. The only, like everybody always wants that green. Oh, I want that green. I want that green. Okay, put iron on it. If iron didn't do it, then we've got to correct something in your lawn plan by a um, soil test. And then we go forward with it, right? Um, I guess I'm in the mood to uh, rant quite a bit today. <laughs> All right. So, a little bit different. I'm usually filming and talking like this. But as you can see, lawn isn't doing bad. Lawn has uh, been... Not neglected, but it hasn't really been fed a whole lot of stuff. I've only put the soil mastery down on it, and then I did a green pop application on it. So truth be told, I did put a spoon-fed regimen application on it, um, and it was a super small application. It was only three ounces of a product, and that was done now four days ago. And like I said, that video... I'm really optimistic for how this thing is going to go because at that point, it's super nice. And people are going to say, well, you just put nitrogen on it. Yeah, I put uh, 0 0.017 pounds of nitrogen on it. Remember how I said I've only applied a third of a pound for the whole year? Uh, the, the, the recommended thing or my uh, plan that I'm about to put out is only going to put down a, a third of a pound because in 20 weeks it'll put down a third of a pound that's how low nitrogen it is so it's not going to take much to keep a green lawn it's not going to take much to keep it looking great um, hopefully I get a couple more questions if we don't get a whole lot of questions I will let you guys get back to your Wednesday night it's always good catching up with you um, let me know what's on your guys' mind, what you guys are seeing in your lawn, what projects you guys are going to be working on this week. Um, those are those are kind of fun things to talk to you guys about. Um, definitely, you know, pays off in the lawn. Looking to spoon feed some green pop every couple of weeks. Any issues throwing biostims once a month at three ounces per thousand? So, no, no, not at all not not at all um it could be modified a little bit and i think that you would get a little bit better results as far as that ron reach out to me because you're on to something and like i said this video will like eye open you and you'll be like oh okay i see what he's going to talk about um, but yeah just reach out to me and we'll talk about it and i think that you were definitely you know, onto the right track there by all means ron um patience is key i'm learning that for sure dead serious like I uh, I had to laugh at myself is that when I have to ask questions I go straight to manufacturers um, product distributors owners of companies um, those types of things I reached out to uh, John Perry earlier this spring 
and I was talking to him and I was like, I'm seeing this and I don't know what's going on. I kind of hadn't put a lot of thought into it and it was hilarious. He just, the first thing he said is slow down, slow down. You're getting panicked for no reason. And you tell me what it is. And I was like, well, I'm not asking. And he's like, you just tell me what it is. And I was like, oh, okay. So I slowed down. I quit like panicking for a few seconds. And the answer was easy. It was super easy. As soon as I wasn't panicking, there wasn't anything that I could do immediately that was going to fix it. You know, there's not a whole lot that you can, but overall that is key. It's just patience. It's just doing those things that make things super easy. Put down some urea, the 4000. Thinking of nitrogen would be really good for it. But now I am really think I stunted the growth this past spring. And now I'm paying for it. You think I'm okay to put down some uh, humic acid, maybe some iron, and maybe some green popper aerate? So I like all of those. I definitely don't think you're going to go wrong with any of those. Those are definitely going to um, help you out. I, I will text you as soon as we get off of this, and I will put you together a little thing to follow if you want it to start jumping really quick there, Drone. Um, and uh, we can, you know, definitely get you going again. Um, yeah, that, uh, that, um, that instant nitrogen definitely will cause, usually not a stunt of, uh, of growth initially, but you will um, cause some, um, some issues long term because you are running high salts because anything that has nitrogen in it, nitrogen is a salt. And so anything that you're running that has high nitrogen in it, you can have some issues there. That's how come they burn yada to yada down that rabbit hole. Uh, good night, everyone. Two more days till the weekend. Yep, we'll see you, Marshall. I'm putting down three ounces per thousand of H01 Green Pop. Um, three ounces of uh, microgreen every week and 7020 um, is granular at three pounds per thousand every three weeks. I could smoke twice a day if I wanted. I don't understand the last thing, but the first part of that was definitely, definitely, you're definitely throwing some fire at it, sounding good, definitely on the right track there for sure doing some good things um yeah i definitely agree with that I, I can't argue with it it's definitely good stuff what's going on up new york lawn so overall uh hopefully you guys are having a very good week hopefully everything is going well for you um, definitely go and check your lawns if you are dealing with any kind of stress or drought or anything. If your lawn is having any kind of um, pressure from watering issues, pay attention to uh, pests at this point because it's a secondary cause for pests. Usually we have pests in our lawn. Every lawn has grubs in them. Every lawn has, you know, sod webworms has, um, has pests that has pressure in them. Only susceptible areas are only going to be able to fall to it. You know, obviously pests can outnumber and get too bad, and then it, you know, it can kill a good lawn. But normally, like my lawn, I've been digging and I see grubs in my lawn, and it's totally green. It's never had any problems. Last year, I think that I ran into this thing, the water coverage, and uh, really, like, like, paying attention to what somebody had burned my lawn out with glyphosate, I thought it was glyphosate burn and I didn't go and do the lawn inspection on it, not realizing, and lo and behold, I had grubs. As um, soon as I paid attention for five seconds, I found the grubs, I made the changes, and I have that, um, that green pop video that you know shows the rehab of the lawn, and it definitely did a good uh, job at it. Um, but yeah, it's usually a secondary issue, so if you're seeing any kind of watering coverage issues, or you don't have water, pay attention to um, pest pressure, pay attention to any secondary like causes that can cause problems within your lawn. Definitely something you wanna pay attention to. Um, <laughs> Ryobi tools are trash. Good evening, how are you, sir? I don't know if I've had very many other conversations with you other than Ryobi tools are trash. Mow twice a day. <laughs> you, you mow it twice a day? 
Wow. Um, I, uh, now you're mowing like beyond God. You, you are a beast. What's going on, Grace? How are you? How have you been? How's the lawn? I, uh, I haven't seen the updates on any of your social feeds lately, or am I just missing it? Um, thanks for chatting, brother. Have a good one. See you again. Give brother a good year, my love. <laughs> Can do. Um, but like I said, overall, just pay attention to uh, if you have any kind of watering issues, if you're having any kind of pressures like that, because pests are going to get in there and they can cause damage as a secondary cause when water is definitely not something. So if you, um, you know, if you are having those issues, just pay attention. Hopefully you guys are going to have a good week. Hopefully everything goes well for you. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, as usual, just reach out to me, Jeremy of the Greenerlawn at gmail.com or on Instagram. I do uh, like to answer um, things on Instagram, and that's just the Greener Lawn. And uh, DM me. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, helping you guys and uh, assisting you guys is what I love to do. So hopefully if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you reach out. Um, I forgot the person who I said I wanted them to reach out to me about the program. Anyways, if you're looking at setting up a program and something that works for you, feel free to reach out to me. I'm helping people um, set up lawn programs. Uh, it's always a fun thing to do. Uh, we go through quite a few things. I've been helping, I don't know, 70, 30, uh, 70 80 people this year, somewhere around there as far as like lawn application programs and they've been kind of fun um hopefully you guys have a good week and i'm jeremy of the greener lawn there it is maker green i don't know how to shut it off i have this big like dead cat in my way look at this this is what i can't this is yeah hopefully my audio didn't just go bad but yeah this is i can't see around this <laughs> hopefully you guys have a good day and uh yeah, we'll see you guys. Been lazy. Lawn is looking good after pumping down hydrotain. That stuff does work. That stuff does a great job. I think I'm hitting the end of, like, getting close to the end of the life on what I had here. And so I'm starting to see some things. We'll see you, Jay. See you, Andy. All right. Yep, I can now turn it off. Have a good night.